And today's topic is tuples. So tuples um, are very similar to list, uh, but there is just one difference, and that is um, it's immutable. Okay, and since it's immutable, it's also ordered because you cannot elements, you cannot add elements wherever you want. So whatever is the initial ordering of the tuple will remain. So other than that. Uh, there are hardly any differences, but we will just go through um, how to create a tuple. So, in the case of tuple, you have to use a parenthesis or open bracket and then commas used. Again, you can store any data type in a tuple. And if so, if you can, if you see uh, this uh, tube three. This is basically not, con it doesn't have parenthesis, but still, if you check out the type of this variable, uh, this data, uh, so, yeah, this variable, it will be of the type tuple because by default, if you have multiple items, it will be taken as a tuple. Now, type is a function that you can use. Um, to find out which type your uh, variable is, okay, which class your uh, variable belongs to. Now you can use constructor also to make a tuple. Now constructor is a topic that comes under classes and objects, which will be taught later in the series. Uh, tuples allow duplicate values, uh, just like lists. Like I can have apple and apple two times, and it's not at all an issue. This is how an empty tuple looks. This is how a single valued tuple looks. So all of these values, when they are printed, these are just different uh, types of tuples. I mean, different ways a tuple can be declared. So by default, uh, uh, Multiple values are taken, multiple objects are taken as tuple. That's what this is about. You can check the type. So the type of my tuple will be tuple. This is how you can use type function. Then there is something called as len. Again, you can find out how many elements are in the tuple, just like you did in lists. Now, how can values be accessed in a tuple? The same way it was done in lists uh, basically you can use the index or you can use col uh, colon and you can go from whichever index okay so i can start at first index and go all the way till five okay five basically means only till the fourth index five is not included now uh as I mentioned, tuples are immutable. So if I try to update a tuple, it's not possible. It will result in an error. So I can just show you. You can just uh, run this particular cell. And you can see it results in an error. So let's just not do it. I can use plus symbol to add tuples just like it was done in list. Now, if I have a, tu a tuple and I want to insert a new element to it, I cannot do it. The other way, okay, the indirect way of adding element to a tuple would be first converting it into a list, okay, and then appending whatever you want to, and then find and then converting it back to a tuple. This is one way that can be done. Otherwise, you cannot directly insert into a tuple. Uh, you can uh, you can delete a tuple. Okay, the entire tuple can be deleted. So you will have an empty tuple. Then um, you can use in. So by using in, basically you are printing um, the element from the tuple. Okay, so for x in tub uh, in tube one, basically it's going to print all the elements of the tuple. Now negative indexing. This is the same. Um, as uh, we saw in lists, 
it uh, it supports negative indexing that is uh, you can start from the end of the tuple so i can start from cherry and um, here minus four colon minus one basically means i start from minus four that is this and then i go all the way to minus one and i can use I can also check if a particular item is present in my tuple just the way we saw in lists. Now uh, let's go to the second topic of the video and that is sets. So set is again um, a data type that can store multiple values, multiple data types in it. Now how is it different from tuples and list? This is unordered and unindexed. Okay, so you cannot um, you cannot uh, like access a particular index from the set. So it's all randomly present. So you can you can just access the element, but you cannot uh, access at a particular index because the concept is it's unordered. And uh, set Python identifies a set by uh, looking at the curly brackets. Uh, sets do not allow duplicate values. So if even if you have a duplicate value, it will not be considered. So if I declare my set like this, there are two Apple items, right? But um, just one of the Apple item will be considered. So if I print this set, only Apple has been printed only once. I can also find the length of a set. And that is by using length. So this will give me three because there are three elements in my set. So just like lists and uh, lists or tuples, um, set can have any uh, data type in it. It can have boolean, string, integer, float, anything. Now um, you can also check the type. So here my set. Since it uses curly braces, it's of the type set. You can check the type and that gives it a set. Now you can see that there is something called as class. This is not in the scope of this video. You can also use set constructor. Um, the way you used a tuple constructor for uh, declaring tuples, you can also use set constructor. Now let's look at certain set operations that can be performed. So if you have, um, if you're familiar with, um, you might be familiar with the set operations, union, intersection, difference, and symmetric difference. These are some of the mathematical topics that you might have come across. So these are the two sets that I have declared, A and B. Now, if I want to perform a union, um, if I want to perform union function, then this is the operator that I'll be using. Okay, so by using this operator, I can basically find the union. So union basically means um, elements of A plus elements of B, but there are no duplicates, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So both of them are combined, but there are no duplicates. So I can also use union function for finding the union. So a dot union b or b dot union a both will give the same output. Then intersection will find only the common elements from the two set sets. So here the common elements are four and five. That's what gets printed over here. And you can use and symbol to find intersection. Or you can use the intersection function, inbuilt function, a dot intersection b, b dot intersection a will give the same output. Set difference is removing all the elements present in b from a. Okay, so if you look here, if I remove all the elements of b that are present in a, that will be 4 and 5. 4 and 5 will be removed from A and you will get 1, 2, 3 as the output. So here you can see 1, 2, 3. You can also perform B minus A. Okay. 
तो b माइनस ए तो b माइनस ए विल बेसिकली मीन रिमूविंग एलिमेंट्स ऑफ a फ्रॉम b सो फोर एंड फाइव विल गेट रिमूव You can see eight six seven will be printed. You can also use a dot difference b, b dot difference a. But one thing to note here is that a dot difference and b dot difference will not give the same results. Okay, so if so, this six seven eight is basically b dot difference a. So it's going to remove elements of a from b. A dot difference B will remove elements of B from A, so they are completely different. Now there, uh, there is another functionality, and that is set system uh, symmetric difference. So this basically removes the common elements. Okay, it will remove the intersection elements, and it will retain the rest of the elements. So it's like you perform a union of the two. Okay, and you remove the Elements that are common to both the sets, and that will give me the set symmetric. Okay, so the symbol used is this, and this is the resulting set. So you can see four and five were common uh, to both A and B, and they are, and those two elements are removed, right? Um, and you can use the function symmetric difference also. So a dot symmetric difference or b dot symmetric difference will give the same output. There is no difference. Now, if I want to add certain elements to my set, I can use add function. So here, a for loop is being used to add elements to the set, and these are certain functionalities. That you can use. Okay, so set three is union of set one and set two. Set four is intersection of set one and set two. And here, when I'm saying set three greater than set four, this means I am checking if set three is a superset of set four. That means, uh, set three will consist um different sets, different uh, combinations of set four. And then set three is going to check if uh, it's a subset of set four. Then you can also check if set three and set four are exactly the same. You can also perform difference as you saw. And there is another function is disjoint, which means set four and set five have nothing in common. And then in the end, I can perform a clear function to. Clear all the elements from the set, so I get an empty set. So that is it for the concepts of um, tuples and sets. I hope it's clear. Um, thanks again for watching.